Hi guys, bringing you the first in a new series of videos, uh, which I'm calling Mannequin of the Month, which is based upon this mannequin I have set up in the back room, on which I like to rotate the uniforms, I like to change the uniforms monthly to make sure that I'm getting the most out of my military collection. There's no point having a collection if it's just going to be in boxes. So uh, I like to change this monthly so that I'm seeing different parts of the collection and uh, try and have it represent um, historical, uh, different historical periods as well, which is which is an interesting way of doing things. Um, as I say, we'll be starting uh, this month with uh, this setup here, which is to represent a uh, British infantryman or the British Army of the Rhine, circa 1965. I will still be doing the videos where I do full one-man skits. Obviously here you don't see the combat trousers, boots, etc. So it's a little bit more limited. I don't have all the contents and everything like I do in the other videos, but I will still be doing those. This just means that at least once a month there will be a video looking at kit worn together with the uniform and so forth a little bit perhaps a little bit easier to see how it's worn and used and so forth as opposed to just looking at individual items so it might be of a slightly greater interest i know a lot of you have expressed uh, more interest in the videos where i'm looking at complete sets of kit and so forth so this is sort of a halfway house as i say british army of the rhine 1965 british infantryman one thing to note here that's an apparent omission, or would have, might have first appear an omission on my part, is a, a respirator in its haversack. The photographs I'm basing this on, for whatever reason, respirators weren't being worn. Uh, 1965, obviously, the light anti-gas respirator is still an issue. The S6 is beginning to make an appearance, or certainly it's in, in, in production. So, as I say, the, this is purely, the lack of one is purely based on the photographs on which I've, I've based this setup. But for the kit that is here, we'll start at the top. First of all, the Mark IV steel helmet, which has been covered with Hessian, basically sandbag material, with a camouflage net over the top of that, to which scrim and local foliage could be attached in order to produce camouflage effect. Although it's not uncommon to see them at this time worn just like this, with the uh, just the, the um, Hessian and the net over the top. Moving down at the neck, we have a scrim scarf worn at the open neck of the combat smock. And of course, the combat smock here is the 1960 pattern. This is an earlier 1960 pattern, the first issue, uh, which would obviously be predominant at the time. The, the second issue had only just entered production or was, was entering production around this time. And I'll put a card up in the corner of the video there if you wish to see more about the 1960 pattern combat uniform. The web equipment worn, of course, is the 1958 pattern. And this is all early components of 1958 pattern. Details changed quite a lot over the course. And I've done three videos detailing that so far. Uh, three videos, two I think so far, I need to make the third on the on the later issue, the uh, predominantly late, mid, well predominantly 70s through 80s and then obviously into the 90s, 58 pattern. Um, not that these components weren't used right the way through by some troops but the design changed progressively uh, through its uh, manufacture and through its use but that's a topic for another video. What we have here is early issue components so we've got the belt here, obviously, and then the two ammunition pouches, which we'll look at in more detail in a minute. Uh, just one detail that can be picked out here is these are first issue with the stiffened side to the lid, this curved, uh, or the flap rather, uh, this curved stiffened section to the side there. The yoke is also a first issue item uh, without the uh, little loops on the, on the shoulder straps to take the uh, straps from the pack. Obviously, they come over the shoulder and hook onto these D-rings when you're wearing the pack and later issues of these had little straps to guide them over the shoulder and make sure they remained on the padded area of the yoke. This, being an early issue yoke, doesn't have that. So looking at the left hand side, we have here the left hand ammunition pouch, which of course has the loops on it for the bayonet, and this of course being the bayonet for the L1A1 self-loading rifle. We can also see a side profile here of the uh, kidney pouches at the rear, which include a stiffener in the side of the lid, which identifies this as first issue kidney pouches. Both first and second issue kidney pouches lack the upper loops which would attach them, otherwise attach them to the vertical straps on the back of the yoke here. So you get this distinctive sag, uh, there's no support at the top, which is a, was a failing of the, the early 58 pattern design which was rectified. Uh, those, the newer, uh, the third issue kidney pouches were in production by this point, but predominantly those seen on issue would have been these uh, and the, the uh, second issue examples which differed only in lacking the stiffener. So looking at the back of the mannequin here, we can see the lightweight shovel and the head of this and the metal part of the handle uh, has been camouflaged with Hessian again. This is to stop any light being reflected from it. And you can see the kidney pouches here, which of course are joined in the middle there, but you have this, this uh, gap in the middle for the shovel or the handle for the pickaxe to pass through. 
Down at the bottom, we have the roll for the poncho, the poncho carrier. Uh, this is empty. Uh, again, not uncommon to see in period photographs. Uh, I'm assuming these were still worn empty to give a steadying strap for the shovel. Uh, if a poncho was carried at the time, it would have been the 1962 pattern poncho, which predated the, the later nylon type, uh, which is it's the same poncho, essentially just made in rubberized. Uh, the 1962 pattern is made in a rubberized material uh, rather than the later nylon example. And then on the right hand side here, we have the water bottle pouch. This is a first issue water bottle pouch with the turn lock at the top there. And contrary to a lot of, uh, a lot of what a lot of people say, you can get the bottle and cup into these. It's a very tight fit. Some of them will have shrunk over the years when they've got wet. Uh, they shouldn't do, but uh, it, it does happen. And you can see here, early 1958 pattern bottle, which is made in green plastic rather than black. And the cup, which is a 70s dated example. The bottle's 1964, the cup is uh, 1970s dated. I don't unfortunately have a 1960s dated cup yet. Slot those back in there. There we go. And then obviously the right hand ammunition pouch there, which has the little pockets on the side for the Inergo grenade launcher. So that's the mannequin set up for February, and I'll be changing it again at the end of the month, obviously. Uh, so there'll be a new um, mannequin of the month uploaded at the start of March. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. And uh, I say, if, if you want to see more detailed photographs of this, uh, check out the Facebook page, there's a link in the description. I also have an Instagram now, which I'll hopefully be posting to over the weekend. I'm going to Stony Military Show, which I'll be putting a short video of, up about, just uh, saying about that later in the day. And uh, if you like my videos, if you enjoy this sort of content, and if you're interested in the videos I've done looking at British military kit in more detail, please consider subscribing. Uh, and if you're already subscribed, or if you're newly subscribing, make sure that you hit the little bell for notifications of when I upload future videos. So yes, as I said before, I hope you found that interesting. And uh, until next time, bye for now.